Temujin spent three more days in the jungle. But now it was difficult for him to control his hunger and thirst. He wanted to get out of the jungle at all cost. Anyway he believed that now his enemies would have abandoned the siege. So he pulled out his knife and he cut the bushes around the white rock and cleared his path. When the path was clear he got out of the jungle. But he was wrong. His enemies were waiting for him outside the forest. They arrested him and took him away. Now Temujin's life was in their hands. But soon they would not kill him and keep him as their slave. They placed a wooden yoke over his neck. Now he was unable to escape. Then they held a celebration. Temujin was the two. The yoke was still around his neck. A young boy was guarding him. The tribe was busy in dancing and celebrating. But soon the people scattered around. This was a chance for Temujin. He hit his guard on the head. The boy fell to the ground. Temujin escaped. The injured boy shouted. But the other people didn't understand the situation quickly. But when they realized it, they moved quickly and searched the nearby forest and streams. They could see everything in the moonlight. Temujin yoke was also heavy. It was impossible for Temujin. To escape with their yoke, the tribesmen were convinced that he could not go far. They searched everywhere but could not find him. So where was Temujin? Actually Temujin was so clever. He had not gone far from the camp. He was hiding in weeds of a nearby river. Now he was waiting for an opportunity. But then a person saw him hiding in the river. It could be the last of Temujin's secret sympathizer. He did not tell anyone else. He asked Temujin to go to his mother and brothers. He also promised to remain silent. With this advice. He quietly returned to his tent without telling anyone. But then at night someone entered his tent. It was Temujin. He needed his sympathizer's help. Because he couldn't move easily with the heavy yoke around his neck. The person helped him again. He and his sons burned the yoke. But also ground searching tents. So the sympathizer family hid Temujin in a cart under a heap of wool. Now the guards came to search the cart. They started removing the wool. Temujin's end was near. But his supporter was very clever. He saw that the guards were sweating. He said that it was difficult even to stand near the wool in such intense heat. Temujin can't hide here. The guards were already tired of searching. So they already abandoned their search and returned. So the supporters saved Temujin in the last second. When the guards returned, Temujin moved out of the cart. He gave him a horse to travel, meat, a bow and two arrows. Now Temujin returned to his camp, but now there was nothing his family had moved away. But Temujin could track them. He tracked his family with the help of horses' footprints. He soon joined his family. After that Temujin took his small family to the mountains. Now enemies could not chase him there. Temujin and his followers stayed at a safe place. 
but it was difficult to find food here. Now you remember that Temujin had a fiancé Borti? Temujin was now 16 years old. He was thinking about her. So he went to his father-in-law's house. He married Borti. His laws gave him a fur coat as a wedding gift. Temujin returned home with his bride and fur coat. He started a new peaceful life. But he didn't know about his future. His bride and fur coat would change his life forever. Temujin was living near the rivers like nomads. He hunted animals, fishes and ate fruits. Then one day he was informed that a power Mongol tribe was staying near his camp. Togrul was their chief. He was also known as On Khan. He and Temujin's father Yesogai were close friends. So he decided to meet On Khan. Temujin also took his fur coat with him. He gifted fur to On Khan and told him that he was his friend's son. On Khan was happy to see his old friend's son. He made Temujin his ally. He was also happy to see the fur coat and he says. In return I will bring your scattered tribe to your control. Temujin now returned from On Khan's camp. He was happy and was sure that he would soon regain control of his tribe. And he doesn't have to wander any further. But a few days after his return, something terrible happened to him that was a big shock to his ego. One morning when the sun was rising, Temujin and his family were still in their beds, when their enemy attacked. This was a Merkit tribe. They were enemies of his father Yesergai. It was the same tribe. Yesergai had snatched Temujin's mother from a person of their tribe. Temujin realized that they were coming for revenge. So Temujin immediately hid his wife Borti in a cart. Then he told his old servant to take the cart away. Temujin sent his wife away. Then he and his family went on another path. He thought the attackers would chase him and spare his wife. But ironically his wife's cart was caught while Temujin was safe. The Merkit tribe had taken their revenge. Now Temujin's wife was their prisoner. As their woman who alone was one Yesugai prisoner. When Temujin learned that his wife had been abducted, he was angry and asked On Khan to help him. He wanted his wife back. On Khan decided to help Temujin. He sent 20,000 troops to help Temujin. Meanwhile his child friend Jamyuka also brought 20,000 fighters to help him. Now Temujin was confident. He chased the Merkits everywhere. But obviously the tribe was also a nomad. They were always on the move. So Temujin's army traveled 400 km before they found them. Now they were near the largest freshwater lake in the world. This lake is in Russia. It is also the deepest lake in the world. His enemies camped on the banks of this lake. Temujin attacked at night. Many people fled after seeing such a large army. Those who didn't flee, started fighting. Clash of swords and neighing of horses rattled at night. Temujin was shouting. Borty Borty Borty. But ironically, Borty did not know that the invaders were of his own tribe. And Temujin was with them. So she was also fleeing on a cart. But when she heard Temujin's voice, she recognized it. She left the cart and ran to her husband. Temujin took him on a horse. After that they remained together till the end. After that many of the Merkit people were wiped out. But there was a problem with Borti. During her eight months in captivity, she was now pregnant. A few weeks after her return she gives birth to a son. The son was named Jockey Khan. 
Temujin's family called him a son of the Merkit tribe. They refused to adopt the child. But Temujin loved Borti. So he adopted her son. This was the time when Temujin was going to make history. Then an event made him Genghis Khan. How did he get the title of Genghis Khan? Why did Genghis Khan decide to conquer the whole world? Why did Genghis Khan fight his friend? We will show you all this in the next episode of Genghis Khan's mini-series. If you like our videos like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.